All right, guys, welcome back to another interview on Unhinged. I am joined by Nathan Wakefield. How's it going? Very well, yourself? Yeah, not too bad. Absolute pleasure to be joined by you, obviously, fighting on March 11th. Uh, I'm super excited, obviously, making your amateur debut. Are you excited? Yeah, 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 100%. Am I excited? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? It's been a little while waiting for it, but yeah, I'm ready to go now. Um, yeah. Aye, ready to go. And then, the first and foremost, I want to ask for, for people that obviously don't know who Nathan Wakefield is, introduce yourself a bit, how you got into MMA, and obviously, um, yeah, how you got into MMA and how, where you are now. Yeah, so that's actually a funny story. <laughs> so, um, I used to, I never like played it a lot, like, I was never like a boxer when I was younger or anything like that. I always played football massively into that. And then uh, I think it came to like, what was it, like 2018, 2019. And I'd been playing football and I got really sick. I had like this thing called glandular fever, which basically means once you've had it, you like, you, uh, something in your stomach expands. You're not allowed yeah. to do contact sport. So I thought it'd be a good idea to come in here and start doing MMA. So I wasn't allowed to play football, so I started doing this instead. Um, and then I think after like my first session, obviously COVID kicked in, which was never great. Um, after that, I just fell in love and I, I've never turned back since. And I'll actively avoid football so I don't get injured so I can do this more. Um, but yeah, so I've been training here for the past three or four, no, three years, sorry, with Steve. Um, and then just as it's grown, you know what I mean? I've, I've just came into it more and more. And then the past like year or so when we've been able to train fully, uh, obviously just here every week, putting the time in love it and then obviously starting to get like the UFC and stuff outside of that um and getting into like uh fight videos a bit more uh obviously watch me fights but like analyzing stuff different stuff like that and then sort of when you you know when you get addicted to something a bit like that start what's happened really so uh yeah I thought it'd be the time to make the next the next step now yeah you talked about Steve Ritz and I, I kind of want to talk about it. obviously training that from from the uni um talked about how influential he is um and you know, how influential is when, when you're training so steve is uh he's the man really he um he's the only ever coach i've had in terms of like mma and like you couldn't really have someone who's more motivated to like have you win and like i've trained one-on-one -on -one with them before and uh got pretty intense to be honest with you but uh he's the he's the bloke you know i He's, he's everything, he's your, he's your coach, but you know, it's not just MMA, like he's obviously, we're a, we're a university um, and it's students that he's managing. So it's a bit, bit of a different dynamic from what you'd expect to see in like a more commercial gym. Mm -hmm. um, obviously he has like a duty of care with us, more so than what a normal gym member would have. So it's like outside of, outside of here and stuff as well. So it's not just like we've done stuff, um, done like we do loads of self-defense stuff as well. And we have like, every sort of character come in as well and then you've got to be like careful because i'm like the taste of weeks and stuff but steve's always been beyond reproach obviously he's coached this gym for the past 15 years i think we've had three champions um some of which on uh, machine mma as well uh, which he definitely lets us know about um <laughs> he sent me the picture, yeah 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 he lets us know about it uh so obviously he's just he's like if motivation was a person it's Steve, do you know what I mean? And then in terms of like what he brings technically, just amazed me. Like when I first started, and I couldn't like tell. I was like, I don't know, do you know what I mean? When you first start doing everything, you've got no clue. But then like obviously as you start to appreciate it more, and you think like, oh well, I know this. Or you get like cocky about something, and then Steve will show you, and you're just like, where's that come from? Do you know what I mean? You just re tell. There's just such like a wealth of knowledge there that like I don't think you'd get with many other coaches. It's weird, he's like uh, Mr. Miyagi, weirdly. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, but yeah, he's a, um, yeah, Steve's the man, like. <laughs> Mr. Miyagi of yeah. Northumber Uni. <laughs> yeah, the Mr. Miyagi of North the Mr. Miyagi, I, uh, he's, he's the boy, like. You see some stuff he does, and you just like, even like some of the like blue belts have been here longer than me. And like some lads um, who like, obviously with us, because we don't train all the way through the year, some lads will go home. And it's funny because they'll go to like these big maybe jujitsu gyms and I'll come back in and Steve will show them something and you know, I don't know, and it's just like the the small things that you'd never realise from positions. It's just great. You know what I mean? It's a, it just shows you the stature of the guy that you've got in front of you as well. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. But yeah, that's Steve Ritson for you. Uh, I... And the last thing about uh, not from a uni, obviously you said you know, you're studying here as well. Uh, if you don't mind me asking what you're studying or, or how's that keep you busy? So to balance out uh, 
the base are a really boring course, which is why I decided to do this instead, because I don't think I could do finance and investment and just solely do that. I got a bit bored of that eventually, so uh, this sort of helps to balance out that. Um, but yeah, I do finance and investment management um, in my final year now. Uh, and to be honest with you, it's just been training in uni and uh, working as well. And I've just been, I've been loving it, to be honest with you, because that's all I've been doing. Uh, obviously outside of this gym and then inside of it as well. So, yeah, it's great. Yeah, let's talk about the fight itself. Uh, fighting Daniel Mo and March 11th in Sheen MMA. Obviously, when we're talking about amateurs, it's hard to research and analyse them. But can, can you give me like a brief? What, what would you kind of know about Daniel Mo heading into this one? Yeah, not, not much, to be honest with you. I try not, I feel like, uh, and especially what Steve says, like the fight's won in here, do you know what I mean? Regardless of what he does. Um, he's a big lad, I can tell, do you know what I mean? He seems pretty fit. Uh I couldn't really see anything from his Instagram. Uh, not that I was too interested. Gave it a little peek. Yeah, yeah, of course. I'm stupid not to, do you know what I mean? I think that's a, that's something that you see with like other sports as well, where they'll like they'll not do like what you call like a scouting report, whereas okay. we should really be doing that, do you know what I mean? Um I had a look and then I haven't really looked at it since, to be honest with you. I had a look, saw what I saw, and then the you know, I, it's not like he pastes it all over his Instagram or anything. Um so yeah, he seems like a Seems like a decent fight. It seems like a good start for me. Do you know what I mean? Uh, both amateurs, both same weight. Um, yeah, that's it really. I've got not really much to say on him. It's more about me, I suppose. But yeah, uh, I, I kind of comment. Like I say, I haven't been to his gym. I haven't seen him fight before. And I, I don't know many lads that have been there. But uh, I. Yeah, I, I watched him fight uh, at the last machine of me. Mm. He was, I think it was a K1 battle, from correct? Mm. Um, he did get the win that, that night. But that, that tells me, obviously, if he's fighting the K1 battle, it's kind of being a stand-up fight, and is that is that that's something that you entertain? You never know. Um, so like, obviously, it depends. You know, if he's a big lad, I know that he's had two fights, both against the same guy. Yeah. Obviously, that yes. second uh, one was against. What, so he what, lost to that first one and then rematch. But both the same guy and yeah, rematched. Yeah. Um, I don't know what that is that he wanted the rematch, but uh, it was quite a, a grueling fight, tough fight for him. And yeah, I think that. Arguably, I was there in terms. It could have went either way. Again, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't know. I, you know, it, it all turns up on the night. I mean, I don't know when that fight was. When was it back in a while? I feel a lot of improvement can be done. About November, I want to say November twenty fifth. November twenty fifth. So it's been a lot of time since then. You know, I'm not stupid enough to think, oh, he's just going to want to strike. Um, although he looks big, he does look smaller than me. So I don't know how that plays out. But uh, um, yeah, I think that uh, that that K one bout doesn't really mean much. Obviously. K1's totally different, even in striking, from MMA striking, do you know what I mean? Because uh, when you start bringing in takedowns and stuff, so there's not really much to be told from that. Um, but yeah, I suppose that if he's had a if he's had a fight, I mean, he's been in there, I've had one as well, but you know, he's been through that battle. I suppose it's good for him that he's come back from fighting that guy and he's fought and won, and now he's making his debut. Obviously, it's lighter gloves, which he won't know about. So we'll see how that is. Uh, yeah. I just hope that obviously he hasn't just been training K1 because that would be quite boring if it's an MMA fight. That's just K1, do you know what I mean? But uh, we'll see. We'll see when it comes to the day, yeah. Yeah, and obviously talk to me about your aspects of your game. Obviously we talked about the K1, uh, but what, what would you like to bring to your game? Is it, is it standard? Do you like to be well-rounded? So I wouldn't like to give up too much. But uh, but uh, I don't know. I think when I first started, I was um, more striking. I went quite long. Um, so I, I think... Uh, especially over lockdown and stuff for practicing. Obviously, there's like limited stuff you can do with people. And then when we came back, I sort of I always thought of myself as a as like more of a striker. And then since uh, since we've been doing our jiu jitsu um, and our grappling, and our wrestling, and since going to like different clubs for wrestling and stuff as well, um, I've sort of like balanced my game. People always ask us this like, what do you prefer? And I go, you know what? I'd love to say that like a strike or something like that. But really, it is it is just either. Um, I love both aspects to the game. And I feel confident, like the same level of confidence in both. So I wouldn't really say I'm either. You know what I mean? Jack, uh, jack of all trades, master of none. So, yeah, that's what I'd probably say. Um, I feel ready for anything. Do you know what I mean? I'm not going into a K1 fight. I'm not going to a Jiu-Jitsu or a Sambo match. You know, I'm going to an MMA fight. Um, so, and obviously that brings it like with itself different challenges because you've got to combine the two. You know, you hit the ground in the cage. It's not like, all right. Let's just start trying to only go for triangles like someone's trying to hit you in the face. Do you know what I mean? So when you're on the ground. So, um, yeah, I would, I would just say that 
for a bit of both, to be honest with you. If I had to lean towards one, I'd probably say striking. But uh, I'm confident either way when it goes to it. On the floor, standing up, I'm happy um, physically as well. So, and yeah. obviously, I want to ask you about obviously making the walk for, for MMA for the first time. I, as I talked about just before you were on air, you made the walk in Muay Thai, but how, how's this going to be different? Obviously, making that walk for the first time in MMA, and you, and you talked about obviously how you've, gr you've grown the love for this sport. So, how's, how, what are you expecting when you make that walk for the first time? Um. I don't really, really know what to expect. I mean, you run over it in your head a thousand times. Like, I'm always thinking about it when I go to bed at night. I think, oh, what's it going to be like? You know what I mean? Like, I'm not nervous, but I'm just like, I'm eager to get in there. Yeah. And then, like, I think that, you know, when I did my Thai fight, it was like, I remember the night beforehand, I was like, just so like anxious about it. But then you get in there and it's just totally different. So I think, to be honest with you, um, obviously you're going to have friends in that there, which I suppose is a different dynamic. But, taking experience from my past fights. I'm not really too nervous because once I get in there, you know, your adrenaline's going, you're ready to go, and you're just solely focused on the fight. So, yeah, that's it really. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say um, I'm expecting, I think, especially a lot of other lads have said that I think it's probably going to be a bit of a war. Um, I do like a scrap, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> uh, so I think it's going to be a, a good fight, to be honest with you. Um, he seems like a big lad, and I think it's just going to be, a, yeah, there's going to be some bombs thrown, some... Uh, I think both of us are probably just going to take each other to a to a big depth, um, but yeah, that's probably all I would say on that. Uh, I don't really have anything. I, I couldn't like really apply my Thai fight. It's totally different to like an MMA fight. You know what I mean? You've got the music going, you've got the Thai music going, and then uh, I won't be having that. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not as in, as ingrained in Thai stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's all I would say really. Um, yeah, I'm just excited to get in there. You know what I mean? It's been a long time. You know, I've got to be careful when I'm in here, especially like uh, we have got some big lads in here, but, you, you know, you can never throw full power, yeah. which I enjoy doing. So um, <laughs> obviously light gloves as well. It's, it's got to feel like you, you get more of a feel with stuff as well, especially when you're boxing. If you, your hands better um, to like be higher up and stuff. So I'm just excited for that, really. It's been like, I've felt like I've, when you've been doing it, as I say, as long as I have, Sort of like because I haven't competed so many times, it's sort of like it sort of is the first time, and I'm just so eager to get in there. I sort of like want to bring it all in and experience the whole thing. But uh, yeah, that's all I would say, really. I feel like a bit of a, I'd say, a fighting virgin, probably. So, do you know what I mean? Uh, it doesn't really, uh, doesn't really translate on the street or anything like that. So, yeah, that's all I would say. Yeah, I was going to ask you next time, um, how are you going to implement and showcase on the night um, for you to get your hand raised? But I feel like you kind of answered that already. Yeah, I feel like, um, for me, it's just about fight IQ. Uh, I'm not going to be, like, some big philosopher, but I always just thought it was, sit like, you know when you just sort of click when you're training and stuff? I always thought, right, do you know what I mean? It's about being able to just be relaxed in the ring and just think about what's going on. I mean, everyone says Jones is the goat and what's his best attribute is his fight IQ. Like, the two, there's a reason for that. Um, if you know what to do in the fight and you can just relax, you know, you your technique can be as beautiful as you want but you know that technique's only part of the game you know, it's mixed martial arts it's not k1 it's not jujitsu it's not wrestling it's all three of them together do you know what i mean so yeah that's all i would say for that so yeah, yeah. Uh, last few questions i've got and the amateur circuit is it's, it's really weird because you don't really have that full training camp you don't have that you know that six to eight week training camp um usually jump fight to fight um, is that the same for you looking for 2023 to be active, try and get you know, as much experience and much as fights as possible? Yeah, so I, I'm not looking past this fight at like who else I want to fight. But like I am looking to compete afterwards. I think um, obviously I'm going for the win. And then after that, I imagine if Ian's all right with it, I'd like to compete on his shows quite a lot. I'd like to get some, um, some separate K1 um, stuff in as well. Uh, and also some grappling stuff in there. And then, yeah, just see where it goes. I mean, it, it depends. Once I finish uni, obviously, it's different for pros. They're just like, oh, I'll just go to Thailand and work on this part of my game. For me, it's like, right, I've got to work for a bit here so that I can do stuff outside of it. Do you know what I mean? But uh, I'd like to get some fights in and just get some, <coughs> get some experience in the ring and in the cage as well. Uh, I mean, no one likes to, get, likes to get a loss, but that's also something you've got to experience. Every pro has done it. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I think I just need to get as many fights in as I can, do you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, I think you can't really 
think my chill son and said it where it's like it's the sport of fighting and people will train like they'll do a thousand other things other than train fighting do you know yeah. what i mean yeah. And it's the same with like football games. Like when I was younger, like you get be- you get better by doing the sport. You know what I mean? You don't get better by just doing single aspects. You've got to be in the ring, putting the time in, my time, but then also fighting as well. And obviously, my aim is to get better. So I just need to challenge myself. If I come in and I walk over this guy, I'm gonna have to look at like maybe he's competing more. Do you know, like do you know what I mean? If I come in and it's a war, maybe I need to spend more time training in between. Do you know what I mean? But we'll see. Do you know what I mean? Like I say, I've got no clue yet. I haven't been in the cage yet. I've been in the ring, but totally different box of frogs in it. So, yeah, that's what I would say. You talked about um, obviously pro fighters going to uh, Thailand. Is that something that you want to tick off your bucket list as well? I thought it was when I was. Because uh, Steve always talks about it because he's been, obviously, he's been Brazil, Thailand, he's been everywhere. Yeah. And uh, he said it. But to be honest with you, I, I think the ties are just so good that. <laughs> Like, yeah, so I've said, some well. of the other lads have said, they're like, oh, I'm thinking of going to Thailand. And uh, obviously, not for the lady boys, but for the uh, <laughs> but for the, uh, the the training instead. Maybe it's both, you know, I don't judge. But um, for me, I think I need to get better before I go there. And that's just out of respect for the ties, because I feel like there's so much I could learn from Steve, um, from striking coaches, before I even get to the level where you go, you go over to Thailand and then they show you like little intricacies and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? So I feel like it would almost be, I wouldn't get as much value out of it as I could do uh, if I did like another year of training. And then after that, maybe I'd be all right to go over there for a month and then just train there. Do you know what I mean? But um, yeah, again, like, I don't know, it's hard because if I, if I go over, uh, if I went over there somewhere like that or I went to Brazil, let's say, to do my Jiu Jitsu or. Um, one of the other, one of the other uh, European countries, maybe it's for Sambo and stuff like that, which would be rough. You just, you're not focusing on an MMA. Do you know what I mean? So it's finding that balance. Like if there's like a real big hole in my game, maybe. But if it's if I'm feeling pretty balanced, I wouldn't say like, uh, I wouldn't say I would change it. Do you know what I mean? It it all just depends. We'll see after this fight, I suppose. But yeah. Right, let's talk about MMA as a fan. Um, 2022 as an MMA fan, mm. it was a fantastic year. Um, out of the bunch, what was your moment? What was, what was the moment of the year? So I didn't stay up for the Edwards fight, which I was good about, oh, and I did say that I thought he was, was going to batter him, which I'm not well, proud I about. Thought, I thought yeah, it was. Gonna, I mean, he did for four rounds, but that oh my god, that head was, kick. First round was competitive. Other yeah, was. I think. I think other than that, the wrestling, which I think is a big worry for Leon in between that, because it wasn't just like. Oh, he's beat him a little bit with the wrestling. Like he, he really did give him the, the full beans. Like um, for me, Pereira Adesanya was just uh, that was ridiculous because it was the same as I think it was the same as sort of like Edwards and I think with Edwards as well. He's had like obviously the whole backstory, but Pereira's backstory it was just it was just so funny. Like I said, like I I've wanted Adas I loved Adesanya. Like when I first started getting the MMA a few years ago, Adesanya was like my the guy that I went to. Like that question mark kick, it's just so oh, slick. And I've watched it so many times. Um, Is that Luke Rockhold? Hmm? Like Luke, like, Luke, like yeah, yeah. That video of Luke Rockhold hitting the bag where he Same. flies it up on the doll. It's just a, you know what I mean. You can just appreciate it. But I do think the past few fights that he's had. I would say I've been on the other side that where I think that he's been, you know, I understand people's opinions of, you know, people need to bring the fight out of Sanya. But I think I saw one comment where there was, I think it was Volkanovski versus Holloway. That was also this year, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And then it was Kananea versus. Uh, Adesanya. Yeah, Adesanya. It was yeah. the same card. Yeah, yeah. I think someone commented, like, what Volkanovski did to Holloway in that fight is a perfect example of how a champion can take it to a. To a, um, to a contender, styles. you know, what I mean, it's, it is two different styles, but you know what? I suppose at the same time, you could say that Adesanya has been. He's not always been Counter Strike, and he has been on the front foot before. You can see that in the Castellum fight and stuff like that. Yeah. And I know that he is the champion, but I would also just say, I mean, legacy is very important. And would you want your legacy to be that you were having constantly boring fights? I mean, who cares if you've had a really long run? Um, but yeah, I think Pereira beating him. I'm back and Adesanya to beat him when he comes back because yeah. now I think it's Sorry, flipped match. again. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because obviously the rematch has just been announced. 87? Uh, two, UFC 287, April 1st. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then there's that, uh, um, 
That's a stack card, that because oh, it's, it's good. For him as well, Gilbert Burns. That's a really interesting fight. I saw something about um, I saw something about Kobe and Gilbert Burns as well. It was strange. It was like that, which is what perplexed us because it was like, oh, they're fighting soon, and I was like, where's that come from? From one of the other pages. I was like, that's definitely not happening. And then there's some other fights on that card as well. There's some uh, not championship bouts. There's some other really interesting fights on that card. Um, I think Yai Rodriguez might be fighting as well, potentially. On oh, that. no, that's on the Australia card. Oh, right, okay. In a few weeks. Again, yeah. Shemek. Oh, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Um, um, but, yeah, not just UFC, UFC, though, obviously. There's some... Uh, Bellator, Cage Warriors, yeah, yeah, yeah. Up, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I've People seen... People come to Newcastle in March? Yeah. Yeah, so might be a bit easier to get. To get there. I was going to say a bit easier to get tickets for those than UFC London. Oh, they were. <laughs> I tried and failed. Um, they're a bit spenny for a student. I'm yeah, not going to lie, and that's literally just for the tickets as well. I don't know why they do it in um, the O2. I would have thought. Obviously, you've seen Fury do it in like the football stadiums and stuff. You're going to get me wrong. Anyway. Yeah, exactly. I, it's just strange. I don't. I don't get that. Yeah. But then again, you know, it's the expert, not me. So he's going to know it. But. He said he wanted an indoor stadium. There's an indoor stadium available in Cardiff. It was, and then Paddy said something about doing a football stadium. All of a sudden, he was for the idea. So I don't know what that's about, but um, yeah, I hope. Uh, I just hope they get more seats. To be honest with you, because it's just like I said, I was looking at, I was looking at the very back, and it was like seven hundred quid, and <laughs> one of the ringside seats was like one thousand three hundred, and I'm like, which is expensive, but I'm like, how is a seat? That's all the way over that bit. 500 quid only 500 quid more than literally sitting right where the yeah, ring is yeah. do you know what i mean i don't get how that pricing works i was like on the phone to me mate last night i was like i'm not doing this this is a joke <laughs> i was like i don't have the coin for this i was like that's literally just for the fight as well i was like well, if i got a train down this close to it as well let's take a second mortgage out to go down there do you know what i mean so but yeah um no i think i'll just be staying up to watch that one <laughs> at home rather than going down no, that's true. It's over here. I know it's an absolute blessing when the Dubai cards happen because uh, we we have a club. have had a quite a few where we've went over. Like we'll go and do a, we'll go and do a uh, like a social, at like Spotlight because obviously yeah, it's like one of the only yeah. places open to like six. six yeah. yeah, yeah. So we'll sit there. And there's been a few grueling ones. Like I remember, oh, who was the fight I was channel. watching? No, nah, I wasn't. I think I think actually we did watch a channel fight, but it was watch the petty on. Um, Sure, Mali. Oh, Mali fight there, yeah. And then, uh, oh, that was one more watching age. Oh, it was Colby versus um, Usman. Oh, yeah. yeah, I watched that one. Uh, that was the one where we were up until five, and everyone was just wrecked. We we're just <laughs> sitting there like, it takes this is sick. And then, yeah, and everyone, and the funny side was is that some of the people who came into the room, and they were all for Usman, and I was like, oh, Colby to win. I was like, really? Like, after Colby to win? Um, but, yeah. No, it's been a big year for, for MMA. I think it might be a bigger one this year. Yeah, that's what um, I'm going to ask you next. Yeah. 2023 is obviously very stacked already. Yeah. What, what's the most, because obviously we talked about Adesanya Pera. That's booked. Most anticipated Jones, fights. What, 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 what are you most looking forward to? Oh, it's a hard question. I feel like it's going to be a fight that hasn't been announced yet. Huh. McGregor's comeback is going to be fun. Uh, I hope he comes back uh, just for the entertainment of it. I think uh, the ultimate fight of this year is going to be good. I think there'll be some, I hope they get some, because there's some, so many opportunities for big coaches to be on that. Um, I want to see where Peter Yan goes. I want to see what he does next. Oh, he's got, he's booked against Marab Kavishwili. Yeah, so I want to see, but I think he beat him. Marab is for bad. me, Yan's been my favourite for a, a long time. Mm -hmm. He's been probably, his, I'd say between him and Volk, have been the most technical fighters in there which is what I appreciate in a, in a fighter and uh, it was a tough decision with that o O'Malley fight um, but yeah I want to see what Jan does this year because I think that a lot of people are ruling him out um, Jones has come back <sighs> the thing with Jones is that I'm sure it'll be a great fight but then is he not going to fight for another two years or something like that so um, yeah Interested to see what happens with Ngarno as well. I don't think that's the end of him boxing, with the U. He'll go to boxing. I think he'll come back to the UFC. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at someone like Brock Lesnar's going away, doing WWE, and then coming back. I think that's no problem for him. So we have seen it before. Like go to different sports. Um, but yeah, I think everything's just a. 
everything's just up in the air. I'll be interested to see what happens with Makachev Oliveira. I think that's a big question. Um, I, don't I don't think, think I don't think. I, I know, I know, I know he's going to, but I think Oliveira either way gets a shot at whoever wins wins out of those two. Oliveira, um, target to fight, you know, Darius. Yeah, yeah. Darius is a weird one as well. It feels like he should have had a title shot a long time ago. Um, I'm interested to see what happens at a flyweight with because we just had that fight with Moreno, Moreno and uh, Figueiredo. Yeah. It just feels like it's funny because they got rid of um, DJ. Because it was like for Penn Askren, which is an interesting trade. And um, yeah, it feels like they did that to make the division more exciting than it's been anything but since then. Um, I mean, when you've got people who are fighting each other four times for the for the belt, it's just strange. So I'm interested to see what happens with that division, to be honest with you. We've got Sahudo coming back as well. So, um, although I don't think he'll be in that lower weight class. Uh, yeah, um, it's just a, it's been. I think it's going to be a really weird year for MMA. I think it's been weird already. Uh, I think there'll be a bit more coming up to it. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of shocks this year again. I think it's going to be very similar to last year, where you've had like I don't think it'll be like final. I think it's very rare to have two like obviously the Pereira and Adesanya fight, and then the Edwards and Usman fight. I think that's like once in a generation you see those two fights happen in the same year with that kind of like knockout. And like backstory to it as well. Um, but with this year, I think it's going to be some big shocks again. Uh, yeah, I don't know what you think. Obviously, you're a bit more experienced than I am. I spend more time in here than I do watching it. Uh, I feel like for me, although there's always stuff to learn, I'll probably use more watching um, like more basic stuff than the unbelievable stuff they're pulling off in the cage, which I could never dream to do. Do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, that's it for me. I, like I, I just watch a lot of fight videos that uh, are a bit more like a, it's more basics than seeing like an Edson Barbosa spinning yeah. <laughs> head yeah, kick. Yeah, yeah. I'm like I'm not seeing. I'm not looking at those. I'm not trying to perfect that technique. Do you know what I mean? I've got a long way to go before I could even think about doing anything like that. So yeah. Well, Nathan Whitford's gonna mix it up in 2023 as well. You forgot to mention yeah. that. Yeah, that's true. I am going to mix it up in 2023, so uh, that's going to be... I don't think I'll quite be reaching the same um, the same yeah. height as some of the others. Let's see whether the year takes us, do you know it's what I mean? We we'll have, we'll haven't seen it. It's very... It's a, I'm quarter way through the year. I'd be happy to fight another two or three times this year. Um, ideally, all MMA, depending on how the bouts go, and that's literally what I would... That's as far as I would go for it. Um, opportunities are always here and there. I'll see you later, man. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll sort them out, don't worry. Uh, it's all right, don't worry about it. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's as far as I would go with it, really. Um, I, I, you know, I, I wouldn't say my ego is as, as far as to think that I'm unbelievable. I'm really not, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's amateur MMA for a reason, amateur emphasised. So, yeah, we'll see where it goes. You know, you, you never know until you get in there. Um, you can only hope. Was two seconds, boys. Can you just uh, I'll finish them off. Can you just start off with the mats? Yeah, sorry, Tom. Is that all right? Right, uh, but I, I'm, I'm, um, I don't know. I wouldn't really say that my fight's going to be one of the highlights of MMA fans this year. Do you know what I mean? But you know, you never know who sees. Sometimes people go viral, look at Buckley. Um, so yeah. That's all I would really say on that, to be honest with you. And then the last but, uh, question before I let you pack up. No, that's all right. That's fine. We need to go as well. Um, obviously, talk to me about the aspirations uh, for rescue career long term as, as we're looking at. Obviously, everyone looks at the UFC and like, I would love to make it one day. Is, is, that, is that the same? Obviously, UFC, Bellator, is that, is that what you're looking at? Um, honestly, I just do, do it because I love it. Uh, I think with stuff like that, it depends. If you, I mean, Steve clearly sees something in us that he puts us in here. I think the next two or three years of me telling, I've arrived at the sport very late and I'm under no disillusion that, you know, I'm going to compete against someone or ever. You've got to be some sort of talent to do that. Do you know what I mean? Um, the rest of these people who are fighting the pro have been doing it all their lives. And the people who are making it later have been Division One athletes in America. Do you know what I mean? So you're looking at like, yeah, you're Greg Hardy's or someone who's joining it late, but he's just built like a brick shit house, so <laughs> he can get away with it. Do you know what I mean? I don't quite have the same... Um, the same stuff so 
you know, I just do it and I put the work in because I just love doing it. Um, and eventually when you become obsessed with something, it's just, you do it. And then, you know, if I got like 30, we'd see where I was. Uh, that's usually when most fighters peak. So uh, if someone comes calling, then that's fine. But I don't think that's going to be happening anytime soon. Uh, there's, a, there's a really high level of talent out there now. And like lots of clubs. So, you know, I think it would be very naive for me to say, oh yeah, so uh, signed next year. And then after that, we'll be looking at like maybe the champions. And you know what I mean? You're looking at someone like Paddy the Buddy who's got in the UFC, um, which I just won't comment on. But look at how, even with all the hype behind him, he's still not fought top 10. I'm not grilling him for that. I'm just saying how hard it is just to get yeah. to that bit. And he's been fighting all of his life. However many amateur fights he's had. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think it'd be very naive for me to be like, oh yeah, pro soon. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. we'll see how it goes. I. Yeah, I think obviously amateur is it's just all about experience and you know, yeah. you've got to use that experience when you've had, I don't know, 10 or plus fights in amateur scene. Yeah. You use that experience that you've gained throughout that, then you take that to the pros and then that's when you, know, you become more... Yeah, I think when you can actually like devote all of your time to it and you can make the money off it to devote all your time to it, that's when you turn pro. When you're working jobs on the side and stuff yeah. like that, it's not so plausible. If I started making money from it, you know, got to chase your dreams and stuff, you yeah. know, I could be 35 and... Putting in numbers on an Excel sheet, I can't be 35 and scrapping. So, like, it's, <laughs> it comes up with that, you know. What I mean? But, uh, but uh, I, I'm just looking forward to getting in there. Uh, I love the sport, and uh, I love my team, love my coach, and uh, I just want to have a scrap. You know what I mean? That's that's great. I want to show what I'm um, what I'm capable of, and um, do my club proud. Keep that winning record up there uh, against uh, against. Uh, I think we've got a few wins against that club, so I don't want to be the one to lose it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I want to be the one to extend that lead. Um, but I, I, that's all I've got to really say about that. Yeah, let's keep on. Best of luck. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Uh, cheers. Thank you so much, Thank you.